Hey, welcome back to another walkthrough. For this walkthrough, we're looking at PowerPoint 6G repairs. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to download our materials. We only have three things this time to download, so we're going to download our instructions and PowerPoint. Once again, do not download all files. And let's go ahead and open up our student file. And make sure you hit enable editing. So for step number two, our first step, it wants us to apply a push transition to all slides in the presentation. So let's go ahead and come up here to our transitions tab. Once you've clicked on the transition page, go ahead and click on the push transition under the transitions to this slide. And once you've done that, come over here and hit apply to all. And notice now when I click on slide two, it has the push animation. When I click on three, it has the push transition. Now it wants me to click on slide number two. So I'm going to click on slide number two. And it wants me to select the smart art graphic, which is this right here. Make sure that when you click on this, you want to click on the outer border right here. This uh, outer border, I'm going to click on this top corner dot right here. You do not want any of these individually selected. So make sure you click on the outer border. And we want to do the fly in entrance effect. So let's go ahead and go to our animations. And under our animations, we want to do the fly in. If you don't see your animations here, you can click on the down arrow with the line above it and you should see the fly in anima animation here. Once you click on fly in animation, it wants us to change the sequence option to one by one. So where it says effect option here, let's click on that and make sure we select one by one and it'll give us a preview of what that animation will look like. We want to go ahead and make sure it's set to start after previous. And we want to set the direction. So I'm going to click on effect options. I want to set the direction from left. So I'm going to click on from left and once again it'll give us a demonstration. And it wants me to change the duration to two seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and come here and I want to change the duration to two seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit preview so I can see what it does and just notice that it comes in a little bit slower. Now it says on slide number three, so let's go ahead and click on slide number three. And let's go ahead and click on our S smart art graphics. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this smart art graphic. Once again, I wanna click on the outer border to make sure none of them are actually selected. I again wanna select the fly in animation. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on fly in animation. I want to set the effect option to all at once. I'm going to click on effect options and all at once. I want to change the direction from left. So I'm going to click on effect options again and hit from left. And I want to change the duration again to two seconds. I'm going to go ahead and click on preview and see what it looks like. Notice how it comes in a little bit slower. For step number five, it wants us to go to slide four. On slide four, it wants us to click on the smart art graphic. Make sure you click on the outer border so that the whole art smart art is selected. For this one, we want to do the fade entrance animation. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select fade. And I want to change it to one by one. So I'm going to click on effect options and do one by one. And I want to change it to start after previous. So I'm going to click where it says on click. I'm going to change it to after previous. For step number six, it wants us to go to slide seven. So I'm going to scroll down to slide seven. On slide seven, at the lower right hand of the slide, it wants us to insert a action button go home shape. So I'm going to go to my insert tab here. From my insert tab, I'm going to go to shapes. 
Under actions, I want to find the one that says go home, which it's the one that looks like the home. It's this one right here. I want to click on that and I want to come down to the lower right hand corner. So right about here and I want to click once and it's going to put the icon in there for us. Once I put in that uh, icon, it's going to open up my action settings. Here I want to make sure it hyperlinks to the first slide and go ahead and hit OK. I want to come up to my shape format and I want to change the height to 0.5 and I want to change the width to 0.5. And notice how it makes it a smaller picture. Now it wants me to go to slide 5, so I'm going to go ahead and click on slide 5 wants me to click on the picture and then it wants me to insert a hyperlink to slide 7. So I'm going to come up here to my insert tab under links. I want to click on link right here, this link icon. It's going to open up my insert hyperlink box. I'm going to click place in this document and I want to select slide number 7, customer service and hit OK. And if you have this little pop up here, go ahead and hit oh, got it. For step number eight, it wants me to click on slide one. So I'm going to come up here and click on slide one. And it wants me to highlight Penn Liberty Motors. So I'm going to highlight Penn Liberty Motors. And it wants me to insert a hyperlink. So I'm going to come back up here to my insert group. I'm going to click again on my link button here. This time I'm going to do an email address and I'm going to type in repairs at Liberty Motors. Dot biz. Notice it will put the mail to in front of it for us, but repairs. And let me make sure I spelled that properly. So repairs at libertymotors.biz. Once I type that in, I'm going to hit OK. So now if I were to click on this link, it would open up my email client uh, and allow me to send an email to them. So here's another really cool thing with PowerPoint. It wants me to create a custom slideshow. So you can actually create multiple slideshows within the main slideshow. So say you're tailoring this slideshow uh, to two particular different groups and each group needs to only see certain slides you can create slideshows based on that so we're gonna go ahead and create one called warranty and maintenance so I'm gonna go ahead and come to my slideshow tab here and from my slideshow here I'm going to click on custom slideshow and click on custom shows I am going to do a new show, so I'm going to click on New Show. I'm going to give it the name of Warranty and Maintenance. And I want it to show slides number one, number three, number four, and at number five. So one, three, four, five. And I want to hit Add. And go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and do a new one. So I want to click on the new one again. I'm going to do insurance claims. And for this slideshow, we need six and seven. So six and seven. And go ahead and hit add and OK. And go ahead and hit close. So now I've created two different slideshows out of the slides here that I can show to different groups within an organization. So now I want to go to slide number two. And in slide number two, I want to click on the picture. So I'm going to click on the picture here. And I want to link to the custom show insurance claims. So I'm going to come to my insert tab. From my insert tab, I want to click on my link dialog box. And I'm going to click on places in this document. 
And notice down here at the bottom I have custom shows. I want to select the one that says insurance claims. I want to make sure I hit show and return. And go ahead and hit OK. So now during the PowerPoint slide if I were to click on this it would open up those other two slides. It would open up that other PowerPoint slideshow. And then once it was done, it would bring me back to this slide. So now for step number 12, we want to insert a header and footer. So I'm going to click on insert under text grouping, hit header footer. On the notes and handouts section, I want to do date and time. I want it to be fixed. I want to make sure I have a check mark next to page number. And under footer, put a check mark next to footer. I'm going to type in 6. G underscore repairs. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to all. And then I'm going to go to my file tab here. I'm going to go to my info group, show all properties. And I want to add tags of insurance, comma, space, maintenance, comma, space, warranty, all lowercase. And that's it, we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And I wanna save it again for good measure. I'm gonna minimize it. I'm gonna come back to my download starting materials, close out of it, choose my file under downloads. There it is, my student file. I'm gonna click on it, hit open, upload, and submit for grading. And now I'm gonna go ahead and check my submission. I'm gonna hit the three dots, hit view submission. And there it is, I have 100%. If you got anything less, feel free to uh, check what you did wrong uh, and fix it and resubmit it for a better grade. I know this was a quick walkthrough. I'm going to go ahead and start walking, uh, creating the walkthroughs for our next two walkthroughs. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me and have a wonderful day.